Today I want to finish our study on hell, and uh, we left off in Revelation chapter 20, so let's, let's turn to Revelation chapter 20. We were looking uh, in chapter 20 at the great white throne judgment. This is the final judgment for all those that are not saved. They will have their day in court. Who will the judge be? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the judge. And uh, they will stand before him in an event called the great white throne judgment. In fact, he's seated on the great white throne read about this starting in verse 11. So I want to read it. Um, it goes through uh, verse 15. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, I want to go to the bottom line, which is verse 15. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So why do people go to the lake of fire? Because they need to believe in the book of life. Yeah, their name's not in the book of life. And we know from other scripture, why is their name not in the book of life? Yeah, they didn't have everlasting life because they didn't believe in Jesus for that life. So the, the bottom line of this judgment is this book will be open. It will be demonstrated to people. This is the reason that you uh, will, are being cast in the lake of fire is because your name is not written in the book of life. That's the bottom line of why people go to hell. They go to hell because they don't have life. They don't have life because they didn't believe in Jesus for that uh, life. So, uh, any questions about that? I think it's something that the book of life is mentioned during this time even <clears throat> because it's letting you know for sure that those that went to the lake of fire are not in the book of life yes i mean it's just it, it, it's 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 there you know yeah. it's it's in other words their works or their deeds the book for that could have been just that but they're making expounding saying this is your name's not here in this book so this is why you're going that direction right Right. Why do you think? Why do you think? Why do you think that there's documentation on that book? You know, it's just Jesus telling them, "Well, you never believed." So, I don't know. There's something about it being written down. I don't know why that is. Well, um, this is a courtroom. This is. Uh, their day in court. And there's, there's evidence. This is the evidence. So this, you know, I think uh, there's documentation. There's evidence brought here at the uh, Great White Throne. They have their day in court. Here's the evidence being presented. It seems very formal. Yeah. What I'm getting at. It's very, you know, we're doing this because of this. It's official and formal. Yeah. Yeah. We can't argue about it. No, it's documented. Right. Yeah, he could have done it all verbally, but yeah. he went the extra mile. 
get rid, rid, give written documentation. Well, he can lawyers, I reckon. Couldn't that be because a lot of people want to say all the beats to stay away from it? Yes. They wouldn't accept his judgment. Right. Unless the book, they, they still have to show it. see it black and white. Well, they may not. They still, uh, many still won't well, accept that judgment. But you know what I mean? There's something else. But, but they know what the judgment is. Nobody's going to uh, argue. What, uh, nobody's going to question what the basis of judgment is. But, but many won't agree with you. Right. Yeah. They won't agree with you. We're going to see that in a moment. Bob? Yeah. So there'd be people from all over the world, every nation, at this judgment? Yeah. So, uh, and it's written in the book? Right. So what language do you think it's written in? The book of life? Yeah. How about Hebrew? Yeah. Yeah. How about one that everyone will understand? Everybody understands. <laughs> Christ wrote it, or God wrote it, in the he created all the different nationalities, so I'll bet you that there won't be no question. Maybe in their native tongue. Or yeah, well, all this, all this book is a book of, with names in it, so maybe everybody's name in their own language. Mm -hmm. That'd be my guess. Everybody will recognize uh, their name if their name is in it. Of course, if uh, their name's not in it, it'll be demonstrated that your name's not, not in the book. It's an absence of a name. So I don't want to chase anything here, but in 15, and anyone not found written in the book of life, can we assume here that all the believers, they will be present at this court in the, in the audience? Well, no. that's a good question. Where will, where will believers be uh, during the great white throne judgment? We're, we're not told. Uh, of course, we, we were told in other scriptures that once we go to be with Christ, we'll always, we'll always be with him. Could be that we'll, could be that we gallery. Could be. I don't know. I, I don't say that with total uh, confidence. So there is, there, there is a verse that says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Yeah. Right? right. So at some point... Every person who's ever lived will acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Yes. So uh, when does that happen in relation to this event? Well, it could be it could be this event. I wouldn't be surprised if it's this event because I gave the illustration a couple of weeks ago. Uh, when you're in a probably all of you've been to a trial at one time or another courtroom. When the judge comes in, what's everybody do? Oh, uh, exactly. They all rise, including the defendant. Um, and then when the trial, at the end of the trial, the judge makes his, you know, judgment. Um, and when he, I think, does, does everybody rise when he leaves? I guess. I don't know. But when everybody rises, they're all recognizing this is the judge. We. You know, every there's not a knee bowing, but they're standing in honor of the judge and his position. That doesn't mean everybody in the courtroom agrees with the judge's decision, and that's going to be true here. Um, everybody's going to recognize that Jesus is Lord, but not everybody's going to uh, agree with the judge's decision. We're going to see that. I think something that's very significant in all this that we're looking at is how meticulous God is and has been and how faithful he has been through the years to record everything in the book. He is so meticulous that he even captures and holds in a bottle our tears. And, you know, I've known people in my life that were, my grandfather was meticulous to write a, a journal. And he wrote every day in that journal and he recorded it for the people that came behind him. And I think God recorded all of this for our sake because he knows all. He right. didn't write it down for himself, he wrote it down for us. Right. Yeah. What I was, what I'm going to ask is, 
obviously refuted by John 3.16 that once we have eternal life, we can never lose it. But I, was, I have some sort of a memory, it might be from past church uh, uh, affiliations where it says that you're uh, their, their names were stricken from the book of life. I don't know where that reference is, but are you familiar with anything? Uh, it doesn't make sense to me that that could possibly happen. Now, there's a verse earlier in Revelation where he, he reminds us that he cannot, he will not erase our names from the book of life. The verse doesn't imply that he could, it's just re a reminder that he won't. Yeah, yeah. It's a plus plus. Yeah. Well, once, you, once he's got you, truth says that he's got you and you can't. You can't even remove yourself from out of this right. Place. So we'll go. Right. Okay. Now I want to uh, deal with it. We've talked about why people go to hell. Um, this is the bottom line answer. It's because they don't. Their names aren't in the book of life. I want to uh, talk about what people in hell believe. What do people in hell believe? Okay. I think there's a popular, I don't know if the word popular is right, but there's a, a tradition, in a preaching tradition, that people in hell wish uh, that they could go back, you know, before they die. But it's too, too late. They know that once they die and they go to hell, they know that Jesus is the answer. They know why they're in hell and they just they, they live with regret for eternity wishing that they could have a chance to believe in Jesus but it's too late. Okay? I'm sure all, we've all heard that tradition probably I guess. I, I think it's a fairly widespread tradition. But believe now because once you die, it's too late, and you'll regret it after you die. You wish you'll believe, but forever you'll you'll know it's just too late. Uh, that that position has always made me uncomfortable. Why? It, it just made me uncomfortable. Why? Because that doesn't. Uh, well, first of all, I don't think the scriptures teach it. I don't. I don't see it anywhere in scripture. Uh, secondly, it's that makes God a God. That, just what I said. It's just God said, "Well, too late." I know you believe now, but it's too late. I know you believe that Jesus is the way now. I know you believe that uh, Jesus is the one who gives everlasting life. It's just too late. The problem I have with that is, well, they believe it. According to that view, they believe it. So why, why wouldn't God give them everlasting life to believe it if they believe it? Because it's too late. No chance. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what bothers me. They probably only done the ones who planned to die after that. Right. Yeah. 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 One of the ones you presented, the guy was there, and and he was uh, tormented and and wanted some water and wanted. And to send an angel to his brothers so that he wouldn't, they wouldn't come to his place. Right. So he knew about it. Right. I think the motivation is wrong. They would be believing to get out of hell, not believing in Jesus for eternal life. I think there's lots of people that believe in Jesus for eternal life, so they won't go to hell. Maybe that's a, that's in the scriptures. Uh, Jesus says that uh, in John three, he who believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's, there's a dual motivation. One is, is to go to heaven, the other is to not perish. So, the timing is important here. Yeah. You know, I, I, I all I'm saying is I'm uncomfortable with it. It doesn't prove anything just because I'm uncomfortable with it, right? Yeah. That doesn't prove anything. What, what, what's proof is what the scriptures teach. So that's what I want to look at. All I'm doing is make myself vulnerable and tell me I'm uncomfortable with the view. That doesn't make it right or wrong. Just because I'm uncomfortable with it, that doesn't mean anything. Well, the devils believe in Jesus and tremble. Yes. No, they, they knew who he is. No. The, 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 the demons, 
who do not believe in Jesus for eternal life. I say that. They knew who he was. The demons believe that God is one. Yeah. But believing that God is one won't give anybody eternal life. No. That's what I'm saying to people in hell. They'll know Jesus is God, but they don't believe in him. They never had, and they never would. Exactly. Uh, you just said it. No. That's what I believe the scriptures teach, is they, they didn't believe in Jesus, and they never will. For as the one who gives eternal life that you yeah, can never lose. Yeah, yeah. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. And I want to, well, it's not my point. I think it's the scripture's point, which I want to get to. Let's turn to Luke 16. We're going to look, okay, first, before we get, well, I only, I know of two passages that tell us what people in hell believe about eternal life. And we're going to look at, to me, I, these are the only two I'm aware of. But they're extremely significant. Luke 16. Let's turn to Luke 16. Okay, uh, this is the famous, we've looked at this uh, passage in previous weeks about the rich man, Lazarus. Uh, the rich man died and went to hell. Lazarus died and went to paradise. I want to pick it up in verse 21. The rich man, excuse me, 27. 27. The rich man is talking to Abraham. He said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they come. To this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, if one goes to them from the dead, they will what? I'm going to read that again. He said, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Now, what's, uh, this is a thought-provoking question. Based on this verse, why does the rich man think he's in hell? Lack like of good repent. works. Give me the word from the script text. Repent. 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 Yeah. He thinks he's there because he didn't repent. He thinks his brothers can keep from coming there if they repent. But what's it mean to repent? Turn away. Jesus yeah. said that we learn about repentance from uh, Jonah and the Ninevites. And uh, the Ninevites uh, repented at the preaching of Jonah. And we go back and look at Passage and what did the Ninevites do? They changed their ways. Yeah, yeah they did work. They did work. So Jesus is reminding us that repentance involves work. Repentance involves work. It, it, you know, the word means change of mind, but that, that's just the meaning of the word. The context that we find it in in Scripture, it's it's a change of mind that involves doing the works that need to be done. So what the man is saying here is if if they if they were warned they would change their ways. They would repent. They would change their life. And that's why I'm here. I didn't repent. It's interesting how Abraham responds to him in verse 31. <clears throat> He said, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be what? Persuaded. Persuaded. Does everybody have the word persuaded? No. Convinced. 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 Or persuaded. Now, that's a different word. That's not the word repent. That's the word persuaded or convinced, which is a synonym for what? Believe. Believe. Abraham is let, Jesus is letting us know through the words of Abraham that the issue is not repentance. The issue is being persuaded, believing. 
Because when a person believes, that person is persuaded. That's what believe means. It means to be convinced that something's true, persuaded that something's true, that God gives everlasting life to the one who simply believes in Jesus for that life, believing he can never lose it. So what we have here is a guy in hell that believes that he's there because he didn't repent because of his work. And he wants his brothers to repent, to change their ways. So they can. What was he wanting to, <coughs> to send to his brothers? What was that? Uh, Lazarus. Oh, Lazarus. Mm -hmm. It's not like people that go here really are just trying to keep it down. They don't know why they're there. <coughs> or some of them. Like that. When they come up with the wrong reasons why they're there. Oh, uh, that's the end. This is the wrong reason. He's not. He's not there because of repentance. He's there because he didn't believe. He's trying to figure that out. They haven't been judged, so they don't know why they're there. Is he still thinking about his possessions because it's about him being rich? Uh, well, yeah, because he didn't treat Lazarus well. He, he didn't have it. earlier uh, when we learned about him. He didn't have good work. He was a selfish man. He didn't have compassion for Lazarus. Like Jack said, now he's he's starting to see <coughs> the what he the way he lived his life selfishly is why he ends up there, and he's not quite understanding yet that it's just simply because you didn't believe. Well, I believe he was told. Um, he's there because he didn't believe. He's not convinced that's why. He thinks it's because he didn't repent. So I that was he should have worked harder. Huh? He's thinking he should have worked harder. Yeah. But he still he thinks he's mind. done more good. He thinks he's in hell because of his works. Right. You can tell by his attitude, he obviously he treated Lazarus like a lackey while he was alive on earth. And he's still doing that in hell, he's demanding that Abraham send him to his brother's house, you know, just uh, even though Lazarus said it might say, I don't want that, it doesn't matter what Lazarus wants, this rich man wants him to do his bidding still while he's obviously in hell and Lazarus is not. You think this man thinks he deserves to be in hell? No. 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 Why not? Well, he's not questioning that. Why, 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 why would he say that? Everybody deserves to be. I didn't ask you if everybody deserved. I asked you what he what he thinks. Because he thinks his work should keep him out of hell. Now, where do you get that? Yeah. It's just the opposite. He's not he thinks his brother he didn't do enough. He thinks his brothers can avoid coming there if they do what? Repent. 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 Meaning, what did what did he fail to do? Believe. Yeah. That's his that's his belief. He failed to repent. He didn't, he didn't do the works he needed to do. That's why he's there. Do you think their hearts will change? That's what he thinks. Yeah. When they're before God, he takes them and casts them into the lake of fire. Would they have a changed heart? Would they still believe they shouldn't be there? And they will probably well, say all I know is we only have two passages that tell us what people in hell believe. This one and the next one we're going to look at, and I want to look at it just as part of our discussion. We may come back to this guy. I want you to look at the other example of what people in hell believe in Matthew 7. Turn over to Matthew 7. Very famous passage. We've looked at it many times since we've been in our Bible study. This this is a, I, I don't know what word to use, but this is such a classic, important passage. Uh, Matthew 7, starting in 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. 
uh, it says, many will say to me in that day, what day? White throne judgment. Yeah, great, yeah. Why would it be the great white throne judgment? Unbeliever. Unbeliever. He's casting them away. Because it ends with him casting, um, saying, depart from me. I never knew you. Uh, they are appealing the verdict, right? Yes. And that, what are they? What what's their basis of appeal? Good, good works. works. Then we do these good works. So they're appealing to the books, right? That we read about in chapter twenty. Just look at the books. Look at our works. Do the, do the works uh, prove that they deserve a place in heaven? No. no. What well, what's the bottom, based on what words does he use here to say why? Uh, they they depart. He never knew them. I never. He never knew them. He never had a relationship. personal relationship. They never believed in him. So here's my point. What do they? How do they feel about his uh, judgment? It's unfair. They get things They don't. They don't agree with it. And this is at the great white throne judgment, a thousand years after the second coming. So these people, many of them have been in hell for how long? A thousand years. Well over a thousand years. Some have been in hell for two thousand years, three thousand years. Been in hell a long time. Had a long time to think about it, right? This, I mean, this is kind of it's, it's sad and shocking, but they've had three thousand years to think about it. And are they saying the way to eternal life is by believing in Jesus, but it's too late? No. We, we've lived with regret for thousands of years that we, we could have believed in Jesus for eternal life, but it's too late. Is that, do, you read, do we read anything like that here? Not even close. Because after all these years, they're still sticking to their story. We deserve uh, to not go to the go to hell, go to the lake. Right, still the issue. Yeah, our works are the uh, should merit us a uh, place in uh, heaven, in God's kingdom. They don't like the rule. They don't like. They don't like the. I don't know of another word for it. The system that God has put in place, they disagree with this fundamental way that things work. And it's the, the fundamental system, system is what? The, the, the Jesus Jesus Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. that we're saved how? Faith by by grace. Alone. Yeah, by <laughs> grace through faith. It's a gift of God, not not of us. Not of works. Not of work. That's not the way unbelievers think. They don't think that way today, and they won't think that way forever. I'm going to say, you want it to them right now. They'll, they'll die on the state for that. They're convinced that it's true that God should judge people based on their works. They'll be convinced that God should judge people based on their works even after they die. They'll always, my opinion, based on these two clues, it seems to me that people will always People in hell will always believe that salvation should be based on works. Yeah. Uh, I think I told you this, but I had a guy I know, I've known for 40 years use this verse. He's Jehovah Witness. He used this verse to try to tell me God turned his back on the Jews. That, that's what they take this verse to say. Yeah. Has nothing to do with belief and unbelief. God turned his back on the Jews. Yeah. It's pretty hard to see it in the It's impossible. It's just not there. My, oh, this is a little off the subject, but I have always, in this verse, wondered how these unbelievers were able to do works that were miraculous and wondrous, and like casting out demons. Can you touch on that? Well, yeah, there's 
a couple of possible answers in my mind. One is they thought they did, but they didn't really do it. Well, I think that's going on all a lot yeah, of today. Look at the healers today. These faith healers and all that they prophesy in his name and cast out demons and do many wonders. Well, they 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 think they're doing it and they're claiming to do it, but they're not really doing it. Well, all they are doing is strengthening those demons. Well, that's the other answer is possible that Satan could be doing counterfeit. They may be doing it by BLs above. Yeah, they could be uh, Satan could be doing it to deceive people. Right. That they're uh, they're coming in the name of Jesus, but Satan is deceiving people with these uh, so called uh, miracles. So I think there's two possible answers. One is uh, self deception. And the other is satanic uh, counterfeit. Whatever it is, he goes on to say that they're practicing lawlessness. So whatever they're doing against the law, I guess. Well, their lawlessness is that they don't believe. That's um, um, they're back in verse twenty-one. Uh, <coughs> Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. What's the will of the Father that we must do? Believe. believe. So those that don't believe or practice in lawlessness, they're going against the will of God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like these people over the millennium have have called <coughs> their arguments to the to what they think is going to be so overly convincing that Jesus is going to say, "Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense to me." And and I think in Romans, actually, Paul does say that there is a second way to go to heaven. That is, if your righteousness meets or exceeds that of Jesus. And these two, these people think that that's what's happened in their case. Their their righteousness has exceeded Jesus, yeah. and that's why he underscores and says, "Depart from you, evil doers." Right. He wants them to know, "No, you didn't even come close." Right. So do they think that, that, that Jesus is right in his judgment? Yeah. No. They don't agree with him. Now, they, they, they agree that he's Lord. They just don't agree with his judgment. What, what are they calling, by the way? Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. So they recognize that he's Lord. They just don't agree. I mean, it's obvious they don't agree with his judgment. They are, they are appealing his decision. Now, what, what I'm trying to underscore is, this is after, in many cases, thousands of years to think about it. Thousands of years in hell to think about it. And this is what they think. That we uh, deserve to not be here because of our good, good work. This is, this is why I think this is, reveals what people in hell believe. They believe that salvation is by work. Or ought to be. Let's put it that way. What do you think that they, that they think everybody else deserves to be here, but not me? I'm, no, I'm truly down here with the wrong crowd because I did these really good works. They could think that. They, they disagree with the system itself, and they think nobody ought to be here. Right? I mean, if they think that it shouldn't be the case that we're here because of our works, and everybody else is here because of their works, then none of us should be. Well, and the rules are stupid. <clears throat> that's what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Or well, they're saying that, that guy's worth 55 and a 50, and you're like, well, speed limit ought to be 60. Yeah. <laughs> but they could be right. saying, here's your ticket. Josh, that, that guy's yeah. worth, I'm, I recognize he should be in hell, but I should not. Maybe His so. works are so much worse than mine. That's that other pride issue. Well, there are religions today that people walk around thinking they're little gods mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. That, that teach this to their people. So you said something earlier, Bob, and it makes me think that you think they will at least be made aware of of how a person actually ends up in hell in reality. Like that Lazarus maybe had been told at some point, well, no, you're here because you didn't believe in Jesus for everlasting life. Like, is that? You know, I think everybody. Right? I think everybody in hell is going to be told that. Okay. Yeah, I you can't imagine. Huh? They just will disagree. They, they don't, don't agree with it. <laughs> yeah. Their hearts are hard. Yes. And all of eternity, they'll never understand. I think 
the book, the two books, one I can't believe there is over the first one. See it. Art is a point to do a little catch you here. Well, they can't. They can't legitimately argue it. They're going to argue it. They're going to yell. Right here, they're arguing. Well, they've got it down in black and white. They don't really have that. Anyway, they don't stand up. We know that. God knows that. They're not. They they won't accept it. They just won't let it go. Bob, in verse twenty-two, uh, in verse twenty-three, what do you have? The first plane in, in verse twenty-three. I might have plane. That that to me just what and what. Uh, mine says. Uh, then I will tell them plainly. I never knew you. You. I fell. Bill has the new. King James. Yeah. He's not the missing words. Declare, declare to them, tell them plainly. Yeah. No wiggle room. Well, a quick thought. Quick thought. Uh, when someone dies today, uh, Paul said to be asked for his father to be present with the Lord. Right? So if someone dies, they're leaving this. The world of time, and they've entered into the eternal world, right? They're not growing anymore, right? Right? Are you talking about a believer? Yeah. Okay. So I would think the same would be true of these people who <coughs> die and don't believe. They've left their body, and so they've left the world of time. We're counting days and years, but they've entered into a world where days, a thousand years, a thousand years a day, they... They've entered into that other realm. If you see what I'm saying, their spirit has, because their body stays here. So, you know, you're talking about they've had, they've had thousands of years to think about it, but I know they're thinking they're in a, thinking about it in a, dip, a day is a thousand years. You could say it's been um, uh, three hundred thousand years, or it could be three days. I mean, yeah. they've left time. Yeah, I could bring it up. What's their concept of time? That's yeah. a good question. Yeah, just a thought. Okay, so why do people in hell believe? Based on these two passages, it's my conviction, based on the two passages, that people in hell believe that salvation ought to be by works. Right. Yes, it works. Yes. And we apparently there's some in hell that think they don't, their works aren't good enough, they deserve to be in hell. That's true of the rich man, seems to me. Yeah. And then there's others that think they don't deserve to be there because of their works. That seems very clear from the Matthew 7 passage. So I don't see that uh, there's a place for people to say, we now believe that salvation is by faith alone and Christ alone, apart from works. Salvation you can never lose if you just believe. Just, we're too late. I don't see that in Scripture. I wonder it would, what, I, I'm telling you, I, it would make me uncomfortable if that's what it was, because then God would say, well, I know you believe it, it's too late. Yeah. I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. And I have a reason for not being comfortable with it, because Scripture speaks something different. We just look at it. Scripture I wonder what, what these people, these people haven't changed their mind. We what got percentage to, of those people were told by Joe Bob, by Bob Bryant, what it takes to get into heaven, but yet rejected what Joe Bob, Bob Bryant, Speedy Bryant, or whoever told them? Yeah. How many were rejected that? Uh, all of them. Well, yeah, I guess so. All of them, but I, I mean, will that pass their mind? But Romans says that they can look at nature, and that's that's a dec declaration that, you know, that God. It's that simple. Yeah. yeah. Could they have got that thinking from what a lot of denominations teach those to combine salvation with work? Absolutely, because these people are the product of the false teachers that Jesus mentioned. You know, these people are people who came in His name. These are people that are church people. That's what's, I mean, these aren't unchurched people, these are church people. Yeah. They, they were taught in church that salvation 
involves work. And Jesus says there will be many. Uh, that, uh, well, go back in verse uh, 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly uh, they are ravenous wolves. Jesus said there will be many uh, that come in his name that are false prophets. So, yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people learn that salvation is by works in church. Christ plus works. What we have here are people who believe in Christ plus works. Why would I say that? They call him Lord. They call him Lord. They believe in good things about Jesus. <coughs> but, they refer to but, but they believe that uh, salvation was by Christ plus their works. And they, they, they believe this in hell. So that's why I'm trying to answer the question, what do people in hell believe? People in hell believe based on the two, there's only two passages I'm aware of, we looked at them both. They believe that salvation is by works. Some believe that they their works have earned them a place in hell. Some believe that their works earn them a place in heaven. My life is on just one tack on. If Ryan Dobson, Jim Dobson's son, I heard him specifically say on the radio, this verse is the scariest verse in the Bible to him because they believe in faith plus works. Yeah. That, that's their background, faith plus works. So this verse terrifies them. Yeah. Right. And as you say, it's two separate issues. You know, it's your work, it's faith right. and then your works. Not faith plus words. Um, I want to uh, go back to verse. Uh, well, I won't go back to anything. Uh, we just need. To, what's what's our biggest takeaway from this study on hell? What what should it be? People in hell will never believe. Yeah. What's what's our what's our biggest takeaway? What should we do with this? People around us are believing this all over the place. Yeah. yeah we need to be concerned for people. We need to talk to people about how to have eternal life. Many, many people um, are headed for hell. And we may God use us to help them to see the light of the gospel and believe. I think this applies to believers, too, in maybe a different way, because the, God has also put rules and a system in place for disciples. There's certain ways to please Him. And it may be the believers... Well, I don't like that. Like in my, my own life, sometimes I, I think, I know I need to ask God for help right now, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to have to ask for help. I know it's wrong, but, yeah. but it's because I don't really like the rule in that time. Yeah. I don't want to ask for help. I just I don't want that to be the way it is. And that's what these people are saying. And so that's not good. Really Belief is tough from pride also. Because oh, yeah. your believer doesn't know that pride yeah. is not there. Well, the scripture says every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Does that affect these people as well? Or just uh, believers? No, they're going to every knee shall bow every time they confess, including these people. So will they confess that Jesus is the Son of God? Lord. He's Lord. Probably that he's the son of God, yeah. So in a way, they know and understand, but they still don't want to have anything to do with it. Is that well, well, they, they believe that he's Lord, but they don't believe that salvation is by grace alone through Christ. faith in Christ alone for yeah. eternal life. Yeah. So it has not, it's yeah. not of works. They don't believe that. Yeah, same as Satan. Too much pride. Yeah. yeah. Right. They believe in the book, first book of works. They don't believe in the book of life. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would give us a heart for unsafe people to a greater degree. Give us a burden to want to talk to people about the saving message before it's too late. I pray that you might, I pray for those people that we may know and love, a family member, a friend, 
pray to give us opportunity to share the good news uh, with others that they and, and that you might open their hearts to see their need of Jesus for eternal life. 